<laughs> Fran, did you get all the stuff I've been sending out? I have been. I've been reading it, yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start this evening out at a 5.30 workshop. It is 5.31 on the 27th of June. Nora? Hello. So tonight we are having a public hearing on... Um, a proposed ordinance, 2019-18, to um, amend certain sections of our code to address overnight accommodations. And if you read through it, one of the things it does, well, what, if, and I'll go through this, what I'll do is when the public comes for the public hearing, I'll do a little presentation, very brief, um, that just talks about a little bit of background and why we're here and um, what the ordinance does and sort of next steps and that kind of stuff. Um, but one of the things that the ordinance does is that it um, establishes an established overnight accommodation map. And so what I have done um, is we have created, thank you to Di Dart in the engineering department, um, she, I had all of the addresses of the existing nightly rentals that have gotten licenses, um, and so we mapped those. And if you look on here, it's so all of the little red hatched are existing overnight accommodations that have business licenses. I'm sure there are others, but we don't have any way to track them. So what we had talked about was. Um, allowing those existing ones to continue um, and then not allow any new overnight accommodations until we have some better standards um, for which to, so that we built get- to be built. Yes, new ones, right, no new ones to be built until we come up with, um, with some development standards that are better, that get us what we want. Um, and we'll be working on that over the next few months. But so with this map, and I talked to city council a little about, a bit about it last night, and this is a really good example. So this is Williams Way, and there are all these little units here that were um, built to be overnight rentals. And while just some of them are, actually have licenses, the city council was comfortable with taking this whole area and, and including it in this map because the original intent of that area um, was to allow nightly rentals and we, what we don't want to do is, you know, if this guy in this lot is living there full time and when they retire they want to go away and nightly rent it, we don't want to take that option away from them. So what I would do after this meeting, if you all kind of concur with that direction, is I would go back, and this is another example, although they are all, it looks like they're all already um, have business licenses, um, and things like the hoodoo, and you know, certainly anything around here. What I will do, however, is I'll take out the ones that are in the in residential zones because those are becoming non-conforming. Those are not going to be existing legal conforming uses. They're, they are already non-conforming uses. So they will remain that way and I will take them off of this map. And just to be clear, uh, that will revert back to residential if it is sold? No. Or if it goes, no, no if, it's if it doesn't meet the grandfather requirements, okay. as right? The, uh, it would become a non-conforming use, right. and we talked about that last meeting where they have to continue the use. Right. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Thank you. I, was, I keep thinking that this the change of ownership makes things different, but it doesn't. So thank you. So this map will look a little bit different when the city council sees it, but at least we have a beginning point of a map, um, which is great. Um, I have a kind of just a question, something I was pondering on this week. Sure. So just thinking of all the eventualities in the interest of both fairness and consistency and not having, because we have specific carve outs for certain areas and developments, but not for others, I guess, what is the response of the city going to be? And I think we should anticipate someone coming along saying, oh, well, I also intended my property to be an overnight rental, even though I'm living in it. I guess what distinguishes those particular developments other than just general public understanding, because I think we should have that ready. 
Yeah, and I think the answer is probably that we can always amend this map um, if we, if there's a, and it would go, have to go through. I mean, a, I don't think we process. should amend the map, but I want to know how we're distinguishing the Entrada from another mm -hmm. condo development that hasn't been part of the discussion until now, but five months down the line, someone who owns a property there and wants to sell it would like to make twice as much at sale and be able to sell it as potentially an overnight rental. So what are we saying? Like, I guess what are the standards for the ones that we are including now and why? And we need to have those like super crystal clear, I think, if we're gonna be able to uphold that and not just have people either in good faith or in bad faith trying to squeak in after this is already done. That's a really good point. Could that be summed up as a precedence held by? That's how we have those yeah. marked, is there's precedence there? Whereas an unknown, holds no precedence in that way. Yeah, I mean, we'll have it on the map, but I just wanna. No, I understand. Yeah, just trying to anticipate that, like. I can add some language. Just if there's any sort of cut and dry way, we can either look at the HOA agreement of those, just something that we say that we're looking at, that's the standard and that's how we're picking. And it's not just because those particular developments had their realtors here advocating for them, okay. that kind of thing. So I will probably look to Becky to help me yeah. with that a little bit, because I think she's got. I'm sorry, I just barely looked at this map today. I didn't see your <laughs> email. Fine. I would love to That's have fine. sat and looked at it longer, because I sure. could probably pick most of them out. Just it will change um, between now and, and city council, but it's a start. Yeah. And it, did you hear me talk about what well, the Williams Way thing. Yeah. Okay. I think that's I really great. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we. I will. We'll try to get input on that from people. For sure. And um, and we can make a change that maybe establishes some standards. Yeah. I just want to make sure we're not opening ourselves up to something else down the line because it was just like, well, just these. <laughs> yeah, I understand. It's pretty Thank straightforward you. in the city. There's not a lot. Yeah, of and I zoning. figured. Yeah. But it's pretty small, just in case. But if there are any out there, we're going to hear from them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to be vacant landowners, really. Mm -hmm. That's a whole other issue. Mm -hmm. There was also, yeah, that is a whole other issue. And the, the, the council talked about that. And we talked about in the C2, where there are areas where there are lots of nightly rentals, did we want to include vacant parcels in that as well? And their response was no. Mm -hmm. So that is not what's being proposed, but there was some talk of that um, with the council, amongst the council members, but they gave me the direction not to. Um, the other thing the council talked about on Tuesday was allowing to go ahead and identify an overlay, like for the North Gateway area, and have it um, refer to the living building challenge, and if somebody in that area wanted to come in with an application that was consistent with the living building challenge that we could consider it and it could move forward. Um, and the consensus was, eh, not, not yet. Yeah. So, because there's, there's a lot, I mean, that's, it's great stuff, you know, and a lot of those things we want to incorporate in, into our standards, but there are places where the living building challenge stuff, we have issues in Utah with, our, with the building code. Um, so we want to kind of ferret out that, that out a little bit, okay. but that might be a good first step when we and actually, I'm, I'm assuming that the this. North corridor overlay is the one that they'd like us to work on first. Cause that's, yeah, either that or the C2, um, those C2 is where we we're getting a lot of, uh, inquiries, discussions. Um, but yes, probably that North, I mean, it makes sense, right? Um, the existing SAR zone and the RC zone. Um, so, yes. And as you can see, a lot of that area is already yeah. overnight accommodations. But we want to have some standards in place before the other ones come in for applications. Mm -hmm. And I've had inquiries on a couple of them, but. The other thing I need to add to this map is the pending ones. Oh. The ones that have been approved 
um, but haven't been built yet, so I have to add those. Oh, I assume those were on there. Okay. No, I don't think they're on the list. Some of them are because it may have been that. That one's the, like, yeah. Like the Hoodoo. Sure one that's on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of them are. Some of them are. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the Hoodoo's on here, but projects. On there. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I think most are, but not all. Um, You've been getting that. the most complaints from C2 vacant landowners? Is that what you just said? Um, I'm surprised not C3. Well, um, C2 in particular has a lot of existing um, overnight accommodations, and there aren't a lot of vacant parcels. Um, so the yeah. council was playing with the idea of, of allowing new overnight accommodations with some restrictions, like no more than so many units per acre or whatever. Yeah. Um, but they opted to go away from that. I see. Um, but it is an area that um, probably makes a lot of sense for a re-envisioned uh, overnight accommodation once we come up with those standards. So, um, and then the other thing um, that this, the city council asked is that we need to put in a definition and this is where your concern just came in, of the established overnight accommodations, um, which I agree. I didn't add it to this because I wanted the, you to have a public hearing on the ordinance as it was written and advertised and published, um, but we will certainly be making changes. And you can, you know, if you decide to take action tonight, you can certainly direct staff to make those changes. Um, and there will be there will be some changes made between now and whenever the city council. Now, from a timing standpoint, it would be awesome if you guys could make a recommendation tonight, of course. And I've developed a planning commission action form, which is like what you were doing with resolutions. But Joel, um, our city manager, uh, and our legal council think pretty strongly that resolutions should be just for uh, their only city council is what passes resolutions, not the planning commission. So what we're doing, what you were using resolutions is kind of a, this is what we did. So we're gonna do a notice of action. And if you decide to do that tonight, um, go ahead and take action. Then I'll show, it, I'll show you what it looks like. Then we will fill it out together at the end of the meeting. So this is what it looks like. It's just pretty simple. The date, the, the project, the motion, the vote, and then sort of bullet points for a summary. Pretty simple. But our motion is still going to be, uh, we're sending it to council with um, positive or negative, positive or negative recommendation. Right, exactly. And I outlined some of those options in right. the staff report. I didn't, right. you know, I didn't, I didn't outline every possibility, but at least it, it will give you some ideas to work from. All right. Um, the, the city council also um, mentioned that we should move forward without delay on developing an overlay zone or provisions for new overnight accommodations. And that she wants, that the mayor wants to see it on every agenda, every planning commission agenda. And I said, that makes sense. And we would, you know, really make that our highest priority. Um, and, and just from sort of a practical standpoint, I would suggest that we are as a target date the end of the year would be a good target date to try to get at least some, some, something in place. Um, some of that has to do with the timing of the legislature, um, and it also is just sort of a regional period mm -hmm. of time. So we can plan on five o'clock workshops for the rest of the year? It depends on what's on the agenda, um, but probably, yes. And at your next <laughs> meeting, um, just to get this over with, 
It's your next meeting we have, not your next meeting, the week, the meeting after that. So that's July 25th. Um, there will be a number of agen agenda items, some plats and some things like that. Okay. And if you decide not to take action tonight and you want to either continue the public hearing or close the public hearing, continue your discussion, we have a wiggle room in the overall schedule. So that is an option for you. Any other kind of questions or comments before we launch off? So just going back, we're not voting on a finalized map tonight. It's no. just part of the ordinance that we're voting on? Yes. That and it can be amended? And certainly, yes. <clears throat> and some guidance um, in your motion, some guidance as to the direction you want to go that to make, you know, develop standards and include um, the sort of vested properties and um, those that would be appropriate as a, as a part of your motion. Okay. But the, but the proposed ordinance, and I don't want to get into it too much before the meeting starts, the proposed ordinance is just to remove overnight accommodations in, the, in our zones. And basically. And, and adding and, existing right. protection. Yeah, right, right. Right. And a map. Right. And the idea of a future overlay. Yes. Yep. Or whatever it looks like. Yeah. Yes. Or city staff to work on that. But our next meeting isn't until after council will discuss this for the first time, correct? Um, their meeting's on the 9th, and our next one would be on the 11th now. Right. It's really, it's unfortunate that they are organized that way, that the council's first the same week. Yeah. But that's the way it is. <laughs> um, so we'll, the next meeting of the city council will just depend on where we are. Um, and if you forward a recommendation, then at the next meeting, the city council will discuss it and potentially adopt it. They don't have to have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. This is the public hearing for it. And if they want to take input, that's their option. But um, they don't, they're, at this point, there's no public hearing before the city council okay. that is advertised. So um, it just, just depends on how comfortable you guys are and as we move forward. Okay, cool. Anything else for the workshop? I'm sorry? Anything else for the workshop? I don't think so. I also made little um, comment forms. Also, I want to speak forms. Okay. So there are little white half sheets out there. If you all want to either give a written, written comment or if you want to speak during the public hearing, it's a good time um, to fill those out and then bring them up to me. Um, and then um, I'll give them to Allison. So the public hearing. Thank you. I was thinking we could do one yes, one no, one for it, one against it. Just I'm just going to call them up in the order that they come. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wherever okay. they're handed. And to I me. also yeah. well, I'll talk about this public hearing. But we received sort of a little flurry of them, flurry, in the okay, last 48 yes. hours. So I'll I'll talk about what okay. of those as well. And you've so, gotten all of those. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the official meeting does not start until 6 o'clock, so we're going to take a short break. Uh, come back at 6. If you would like to speak, there are uh, half sheets in the hallway that you need to fill out for us. And like then it. we'll start our public hearing at 6. Quick question. Should we go ahead and just talk about the language for the existing? If, sure. If we're sure. hoping to make a recommendation Yeah, tonight. that'd be great. Just briefly. So what, absent what we have written here already in the draft ordinance, do you Can think that we're missing? Can I get a copy of that? Is there a copy? I think they're in the hallway. hallway. Yeah, it's yeah, the one that copies. City of Mobile Ordinance 2019. Thank you. 18. Becky, can you send get more? Get, get, yeah. get a couple of them. <laughs> I can put it up too. So right now you have overnight accommodations established. It means overnight accommodations that are recognized as existing legal uses and identified on the established overnight accommodations map. What is that lacking in your opinion? Well, what, what's really lacking is the definition of established overnight accommodations. Um, and so there would be, already we're adding a definition for overnight accommodations. So just referencing the map is not definition enough? I guess that's what I'm... And then adding a definition, I think, of, of I think those two things. Um, but the definition, what do we want to, how do we want to define um, an established 
overnight accommodation. And this definition here is not what we want? Yeah, that's No, this is this said. definition is just for overnight accommodations. Okay. It just says, oh, and established. So that are recognized as existing legal uses and identified Okay. on the established okay. overnight accommodations map. So we'll need some more detail on that. So something about it being either an existing structure or substantially in progress, which I think covers all of those vested applications that were approved before the moratorium went in effect. Okay. And, and that's also the difference between an empty lot in the C2 and something with a building on it that was intended to be an overnight rental that's already there, which would cover all the condos where some are and some aren't. Right. And I think vested is the word that we're gonna use for those in the pipeline? Yes. Yeah. Um, As of the beginning date, of the February, February, whatever, blanking, 12th, February. Um, and also, I want to amend overnight accommodations to, in oh, it, it says that hotels, motels, bed and breakfast, townhomes, but in the next section, remove lodging and bed and breakfast and overnight accommodation as permitted uses. I also want to say um, overnight accommodations as defined so that it doesn't limit it to lodging bed and, and bed and breakfast. So yeah. In fact, I'm going to go ahead. And I also, in our overnight accommodations established, we'll also have to have something in there about it being an existing um, legal use. Because again, it won't include the grandfathered non-conforming uses in the residential zones. Right. Right. Here we want to add. So we'll have to, based upon your direction, we'll come up with a definition. I think that covers it. There were a couple, and I don't know if the red line was finalized, but there were just a couple typos I noticed too. Okay. Which I'm sure you would have on review. Just the stuff that's in red in section four in C and D. No new recreational vehicle Yeah. Park. I mean, you could look at it and pick out what I'm going to say, but. Just no new recreational vehicle parks, plural, or campgrounds, plural, are allowed. And then in section D. Same thing, basically. After parks are allowed, a period, capitalize, establish, start a new sentence, and that will cover it. I'm sorry, where was that? Oh, sorry. In section D, no new recreational vehicle slash travel trailer parks are allowed, end the sentence there, and then established, starting the next new sentence. So after allowed, so, period. Yeah, allowed, period. Yeah. And then in section C, parks and campgrounds should both be plural. In the red, in the red um, sentence as well. Okay, thank you, always thank helpful. You. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, we'll take a five minute break. We'll come back at six o'clock and start the public hearing. Great, thank you. Thanks, Nora. And again, for those of you out in the audience here, if you'd like to speak tonight, there are uh, half sheet white forms that you need to fill out.
Yeah, you don't, if you give me this, you don't have to speak. There's a little, a little box that says, um, you want, I wish to speak or I don't wish to speak. If you don't wish to speak and just want to have a comment, that's fine, bring it on up. And if you do, that's fine too. What's that? It's not final. I was just asking her that when we move to pass or not pass this, we just need to say that we're going to first. I'm putting it at the, it's the order they came in. I was worried about. Thank you. Good. So she's going to include all of us. Um, yeah. Then that she wants help for after this months. meeting, like it's going well. through the maps. Yeah. Busy. Not as busy as usual, though, in an interesting way. And make sure she's got all of uh, but good, really good. Yeah. And for you, you're on break break. Yeah. You can't leave the house because of the mosquitoes. Right, right. You have to really pick your moments to escape. <laughs> so I'm urging Jeanette. Jeanette's on the mosquito abatement board. I'm urging her to
I'm just saying this because it's Absolutely. Legally it is. We have one road going in one direction, right? Like, how do you get 200,000 people out of the community in ten years? Like, if you could just allow them a little bit of growth. I don't know. You can look at it from that way. You can look at it from just like general, like community is not getting the resources. That's my hobby. Right. I don't call it a really good comment. Letters. It all starting. It all started because of a housing outing. People in their own neighborhood can't let people live like this on our neighbors and on ourselves. So we need to do something about it. And it came down to like simple things to do. So. Camping. I mean, we're yeah. just at a healthy level. My favorite mm -hmm. Me too. Five years, it's time to see surviving the mosquitoes. Don't you live in Puerto Vista? Yeah, it's interesting. My chicken coop is like ground zero. It's ridiculous. I walk in there and they all like come up from the, the dirt and the leaves. You can hear them swarming. I have to like run in there and latch the coop in. It's <laughs> not being asked to stop. Yeah, it's really bad. I just got a bug zapper though, which has been really fun. What's that? Bug Zapper? Like, oh, it's great. I've never been is so... Is it working? I've like never been so pleased by the sound of... I was reading the most efficient ways to kill them. And yeah. Like, it said that those aren't very effective. I was oh, it, I put it out last night for the first time, and like this morning, it's pretty... There's just so many, they covered. just run into it. Yeah, exactly. And you can hear it, too. It's like exactly like in a movie. Or just like... Yeah. They have these things that you hook like a propane tank to, and it emits CO2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just traps them by the yeah, thousands, I guess. So cool. But they're like five hundred dollars. So yeah. Yeah. This is like not go outside. Thirty-five bucks on Amazon. So yeah. Like well worth it. But yeah, it also has that same chemical that like the mix. Oh, it does. That's great. Why it's working? Yeah. yeah. Huh. How? Like farming communities. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the delay. And there's going to be a little bit of hitch in the ride down at the end, but I'll explain that in a minute. So these little forms have all been taken. I didn't want to kill too many trees if I didn't have to. Summer's going to make some more, or you can just use any piece of paper. Put your name and, um, and if you want to speak or not. So I call to order the June 27th, 2019 meeting of the Moab Planning Commission at 6.03 p.m. Um, and again, as Nora said, if you would like to speak, if you would like to submit comments to the Planning Commission, there are those white half sheets out there. And uh, once you fill those out, if you'll hand those to Nora, we can move forward on the public hearing when we're ready. Okay. So, first item on the agenda is citizens to be heard, and this is for items that are not on the agenda. So if you have anything to say about anything else, uh, we would love to hear from you for citizens to be heard. Anyone? Okay. Uh, there are no approval of minutes today. I know that was on the agenda, but we don't have any minutes to approve. So, moving on to the public hearing. There is a public hearing tonight for proposed ordinance 2019-18, an ordinance amending the City of Moab Municipal Code, removing overnight accommodations as a permitted use and allowing established overnight accommodations to remain legal uses in the C1, C2, C3, C4, RC, and SAR zones. This is amending section 1706 and definition 1720, 1721, 24, 27, 31, 32. Nora? Okay. Thank you. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I, my name's Nora Shepard, and I'm the planning director. Um, and I 
am going to give a little, just a brief presentation to kind of let, just to um, let you know what, what it is that's proposed. And then we'll move into the public hearing portion. So here's a, just a brief agenda. Um, for, where are we in this process? We've been going through this process for a while. What is being proposed and why? Um, city Council direction, we did talk to the City Council about some of the, um, some things on, on Tuesday at their meeting, um, which did not get into the staff report, so I'm gonna talk about it. Um, city Council uh, public hearing, then have the public hearing, and Allison will give you the ground rules when we get to that point. Um, and then the Planning Commission, after they hear from the public, is open to discuss it. Um, number six, possible recommendation to City Council. What we're asking at this point is that the Planning Commission discuss the application but not take action until the next meeting. Uh, actually, we may try to schedule a special meeting um, with you next Thursday. Um, but that will give you time to digest, digest the, the public input, think about it a little bit. Um, and then make many amended recommendations. And in that time, you know, you can certainly call me if you have ideas. So the process to date, um, on February, actually, actually February 12th, I'm sorry, um, 180 day temporary land use regulation was adopted by the city council. Um, and we are under that right now. And it basically says no new overnight accommodations for a 180 day period while we study what kind of what's in the best interest of, of Moab. And so we're in that period now and we've been going through this process. Right after the temporary land use regulation was adopted, we modified a contract that we already had with Landmark Design Incorporated. Um, they're a consulting firm out of Salt Lake City. And um, they were doing some land use work, but we kind of redirected um, their work tasks after we had, uh, the, after the moratorium was put in place. And so they have been helping to, um, helping us with developing some standards for new overnight accommodations. Um, a public scoping meetings were held um, throughout on March 26th and 27th. There was a community, um, a community group outreach and, and meetings with various different groups occurred during April. There was a public workshop on April 30th, um, 2019 that was quite well attended. Um, May 7th, 2019, a joint city county council meeting. Um, they, did, they discussed the direction they wanted to move forward in, in this amended ordinance. Um, and it was a joint city county council meeting. Summary of that direction was sent out on May 14th. So this has sort of been our marching orders since then. It's changed a little bit with further discussions. Then there was a joint work session with the city council and the planning commission on May 23rd where again, the, the direction was refined. Um, and then both the Planning Commission and City ha Council have been having discussions over the last few meetings. Um, the first meeting in June and also um, in May. So why are we doing this? And I took this language directly from the ordinance, uh, the temporary regulation as to why we're doing this and basically, acknowledging that um, there's been a huge surge in new nightly, nightly rental related development, um, and particularly hotel and overnight accommodations. Um, we also have a pretty big backlog. We have, um, that we have a, over 800 units that are already approved to be built that haven't been built yet within the city limits. Um, it, but they're, because they had applications in before the moratorium, they're considered vested. Um, so those will happen regardless of what we do tonight. The county is doing the same, is basically having the same discussions and they have more like thousands um, that have received, um, already received approval and move forward regardless of what they do. Um, the city finds that increasing nightly rental development in the downtown area and the city particular is forcing out other important land uses to the detriment of a balanced community development. Existing land use regulations and market forces have not facilitated 
the development of a balanced mix of business types, residential inventory, and accommodations for visitors in the downtown core. Um, there are lots of commercial uses that are allowed in our commercial zones, um, but what has been happening is that um, we begin to get, we haven't been getting a lot of other types of commercial uses, and mostly what we're getting in applications is hotels and motels. So what we want to do is eventually take a look at all the commercial uses, but there are many other commercial uses which are allowed in these commercial zones um, besides overnight accommodations, and we want to encourage a more balanced commercial mix. And then there's a compelling countervailing public interest to assure that lodging uses are developed in a manner that complements the other needs of cities and its residents. The ordinance was necessary to assure that the city can promptly develop ordinances and policies. Um, another reason that we've been discussing is that, especially with the advent of Airbnb, um, we had a number of um, of existing, there were quite a few new overnight accommodations that came in before we regulated where those kinds of things could happen. And what has happened it, it, is that it has impacted our um, long-term rental housing stock. Um, and we're working on that affordable, attainable community workforce whatever you want to call it, housing, in lots of different ways in the city. And this is a, one piece of that as well. So the current policy direction, and this came from the Joint um, Planning Commission City Council meetings, was not to allow any new overnight accommodations in any zoning districts right this minute. Um, and then find a strategy to allow existing overnight accommodations to continue without making them non-conforming uses. So the so properties that are already in commercial zones where lodging has been allowed um, would be allowed to continue. Um, and projects uh, that were specifically built, like the Hoodoo or the, the properties along Williams Way um, that were dealt, did specifically built with overnight accommodations in mind, um, they would be allowed to continue and not become non-conforming uses. And the advantage to that is that it means if somebody owns one of those units and they are living in it now, but maybe when they retire they want to nightly rent it and that's what they had in mind, um, then that would be allowed if they wish. They don't have to continually nightly rent it in order to keep that, that privilege or that right. Um, and there's a map Nora, that I don't mean we're to, working on. Yeah, so the maps on the wall here, the red hatched areas are those particular areas that we have uh, that we know about in the city right now, and that is an ongoing process. Right, and, and the, cross, the red cross hatch are all areas where we have processed business licenses for overnight accommodations. We know that's not everybody that rents nightly, um, but those are the ones that we you know, have a handle on. Um, in many cases, specifically Williams Way, um, a number of those properties um, have business licenses for overnight accommodations, and a number of them don't. Um, and the proposal at this point would be to all of the, the units on, on um, Williams Way would be allowed to, allowed the, a, um, conforming use as nightly rental as it moves forward. So they would be considered established overnight accommodations. So the map on the wall is really, it's, it needs, it will be modified to identify um, with the help of the Planning Commission some of those projects so that they can be more accurately depicted on the map. But at least it gives us a starting point. Um, Business licenses will continue to be required for all overnight accommodations, just like today. Every year you got to get a business license. Um, but it's not tied to the zoning necessarily. I mean, certainly you have to be in a, the correct zone in order to apply for a business license. But um, there was some discussion about requiring people to get business license to keep their zoning right. And... Um, 
we've decided that that's not the best way to regulate land use through business licenses, but business licenses will still be required if you want to rent on an overnight accommodation. Um, and then there were uh, landmark design, um, worked on some draft overlay zones um, that could be applied to areas um, where we think new accommodations should move forward, um, but develop standards so that we're getting more mixed use products and we're better regulating the scale and the architecture and some of those kinds of things. Um, those overlay districts are still in development um, and we, are, we continue to use Landmark to help us refine those. As soon as um, the moratorium ends and this, uh, this regulation is adopted, the Planning Commission will start, um, will continue to work on those overlay zones and we're hoping to have those adopted by the end of the year. Um, and then what would happen then is there are certain locations where we would consider new overnight accommodation projects if they met all of the criteria. So what's being proposed in the ordinance that's currently before the Planning Commission and City Council? Um, we are adding a definition for overnight accommodations. Um, people throw all kinds of terms around, nightly rental, uh, short term. So I, I wrote a definition that just sort of says it includes all those things, um, including um, camp, you know, campgrounds and RV sites that are for, for um, overnight accommodations. Um, I'm also going to add a definition for these established overnight accommodations that helps define what makes an established um, an established use. It removes all overnight accommodations as uses from the list of permitted uses in the C1, C2, C3, C4, RC, and SAR zones. Right now, we um, before the moratorium, those those were some of those were permitted uses in various zones, um, but for now we are um, uh, removing them from all of the zones. The residential zones, um, overnight accommodations as a permitted use has already been taken out of the code, and those overnight accommodations in. Um, Residential areas and residentially zoned product are, are what's called non-conforming, legal non-conforming. So they can continue as long as the use continues with some uh, minor, with some additions and improvements to a point. If it's destroyed by fire or forces of nature, it can be rebuilt. Um, but they, they will not become, they will remain non-conforming uses. I'm probably getting way too technical. Anyway, um, so it adds language in each of the zones that allows established overnight accommodations to remain as legal conforming uses. And again, a, a map would be attached to that. Um, and then directs, the ordinance also directs city staff and planning commission to continue to work without undue delays on new zoning provisions to allow new overnight accommodations in some areas and the new provisions would better reflect the long-term interests of the city. Um, on two days ago, uh, the city council had some time, there was some time on their agenda set aside to discuss this, and they suggested adding a definition of established overnight accommodations. Um, they also, there was also a fair amount of discussion about the C2 zone, um, and again, on, on the established overnight accommodation map, the direction was that those entire projects, um, rather than just individual units, would be uh, designated as established. Uh, and then there was some discussion of allowing overnight accommodations in an overlay if they met the living building challenge. Um, and there was some discussion about, the, about that, but um, that was not direction that came from the council on Tuesday, although they do want us to look at those standards when we develop, 
when we finalize our um, development criteria for new accommodations. So some of the things that we'll be doing following up on the public hearing include um, talking about mixed use zoning, being some mixed uses required with accommodations, some performance standards or uh, regulations, I hate to use that word, but um, things that, that control the height, bulk, scale, pedestrian uh, level improvements, some of those kinds of things for overnight accommodations. Um, there was also some discussion about establishing some community commercial nodes, separate from this discussion, but sort of related. Um, and then review of uses allowed in the C4 and NRC zone, and maybe add some or take some away or whatever to make sure that we're promoting a, a variety of commercial uses. Next step, Planning Commission recommendation to City Council. Uh, probably not tonight, maybe next week, certainly by the 11th. Um, City Council um, would discuss and potentially take action on um, either July 9th uh, or July 23rd, 2019. And then we would do additional work on the overlay zones and and then the temporary land use regulation that we're working under right now expires on August 12th. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to the chair. I realize that there are a lot of you out here tonight to speak, which is wonderful, and we wanna hear from everybody. Uh, normally we allow about two minutes for each person up here, but um, I have three minute egg timers. And uh, as many as you know, many of you know I'm a high school teacher and I'm more than willing to shut down the conversation, but what I'd like you to do is when you come up to the table and state your name, just turn your timer over and keep track of your own time, please. So I don't have to shut anybody down, okay? And again, uh, the last time for those of you who have just come in, if you would like to speak or you do have comments to submit to the Planning Commission, the white sheets are out in the hallway. If you'd fill one of those out and we will bring you up and have you speak. Can I make one, uh, now that the public hears, hearing is open, in the last 48 hours we, need, we received a number of email communications and as well as one written letter. Um, and I just wanted to mention those, the Planning Commission and City Council have received all of these. They've also received uh, a lot of public input from the beginning of this process. Um, John Gardner, Neil Clark, Emily Stock, Rita Rumrill, Kirsten Peterson, Barbara Hicks, Nancy Orr, John and Jason Pronovos, and Robert Lipman. Um, we've received input from all of them in the last 48 hours. Okay, I'd like to open the public hearing at 6.24 p.m. And the first person on my sheet is Liz Ballin Ballinger. If I say your name incorrectly, I'm, I apologize. So Liz. And if you could restate your name for the record so that we make sure we have your name accurately, that would be awesome. I'm Liz Ballinger, I'm a resident of Moab City. And I'm speaking in opposition to allowing any additional overnight accommodations in the near future here in Moab. So I guess that means against the ordinance as currently written. I attended the county planners meeting a few weeks ago on this topic and was shocked at what appeared to be a sudden and very vocal turnout from the developers and people who owned commercial land and are worried about having some restrictions put on what they can build there. Now I'm not fortunate enough to own commercial land or to have grown up here or have had my family live here for four generations and pass down land to me and I'm saddened by the comments of folks who are fortunate in these aspects and feel that their voices should carry more weight than residents who have maybe only been here a few years but cared very deeply about this place, the community, and making Moab a great place to live, not just a place to make money. Having the voices of a few be heard above the rest is not a democracy. So I'm asking you to remember all the comments from residents in opposition to overnight accommodations growth that you've already received 
all the people that have stood up at various meetings before this, all the people who've written letters, signed petitions, for instance, the online petition about a month ago that collected 650 signatures over the space of a weekend. I haven't heard of any petitions from citizens interested in having more hotels. If the question were put up for a vote, allowing more overnight accommodations would certainly lose by a very wide margin. And what's nice about this issue is it seems like it's one that everyone has rallied around, regardless of their political leanings, which is particularly refreshing in these times of deep partisan divides in our national politics. Everyone I've talked to about this issue has felt the same way. Enough is enough. Unfortunately, what many don't realize is that regardless of what y'all decide, more will still be coming. I've heard varying figures, and you just said tonight 800 rooms, and what I understand is that's about a 30, 38% increase in our overnight accommodations. That's a lot. We should not allow any additional accommodations to be approved until we've had a chance to experience and assess the impacts from increased tourism that will follow these pod projects that are in the pipeline. But anyway, even if the overwhelming wishes of the majority of residents don't sway you, there are a myriad of other logical reasons to stop allowing a overnight accommodations to be built at this time, which have already been voiced in great detail, and I'm not going to go into it because you just outlined them in your very own moratorium language. What I will say is a couple that maybe you didn't mention. For one thing, even the tourists are beginning to complain. You know, a few weeks ago, you probably saw a letter to the editor that called us an erector set gone mad. I found that one particularly entertaining. you're done. <laughs> so anyway, I just want to say we're potentially killing the golden goose here. And if we do experience a tourism slowdown, all the eggs we put in <laughs> one basket are going to rot badly. On the flip side, I haven't heard any logical arguments for why we need to allow additional overnight accommodations. Please continue to put the brakes on and stop runaway tourism in our town. Sorry, I went over. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Don Wiseman? Is it Don or Dan? Don or Dan? Don. Okay. Um, I am a resident of Moab. I, I've been here full time for the last three years. Previous to that, I was back and forth. I'm a resident also of, for 36 years, of Sun Valley, Idaho. A very similar town, surrounded by public lands in a valley, limited land use. I, during that period of 30 years, I owned commercial property and I owned residential property. I still own property there. I, the piece of property I bought in 1989 went through various rezones by the city and I lost what I felt were rights. I sold that piece of property two years ago, three years ago. And I've got to say, the rezonings increased or stabilized my property values. Instead of having rampant development, it was controlled, it was organized, and I benefited from it. The one thing that I found that my property did not benefit from was being able to have affordable employees. Employees now drive up to two hours to come into that valley to work. It's expensive to have employees in that town, and I'm slowly seeing the retail die off. You cannot be in business. Buildings are for people, and when people can't afford them, they don't move, they don't come. So I would advise the council, the city, Grand County, I think you're going in the right direction. You must gain some sort of sense of control, reassess where you're going, and really think about not just the property use, and don't be swayed by people trying to tell you they're going to lose benefits. So I'll tell you they'll be all right. But we need to discuss how we're going to take care of the people that will make this town work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Janie Tuck? Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, Jason Taylor? Hello, my name is Jason Taylor. Um, I'm not a. Down here. He does. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Duck after my. I will. <laughs> um, I'm not a fourth generation Moab person. I've lived here for about 25 years. Um, and um, I have had the opportunity to, to over the years, own industrial land, commercial land, 
um, residential land in this town. I have, I have long-term renters, um, I have short-term renters, and I also have commercial properties in town. I have commercial property in town that I have no desire for um, or will put um, overnight rentals on. My worry is is that with this, that it um, it limits what I can do with that land. It limits where I can go in the future. If we get to a point where um, you know we're unlocated in downtown Moab, where um, where we have too many burger joints, are we going to have be having a meeting in a couple weeks saying I can't put burger joints there? And there's there's limited uses for these lands. There's there's or for these properties that have been designated for these uses for for years and years, which is why I. Um, why I purchased this property. Um, and so I, I would like to see that continue. And like I said, I, I, I do agree that we do have a, um, an overnight issue and stuff, but I also know that a lot of people have a lot of money invested into these areas and they can't necessarily turn around on. And, um, and that's what, what worries me and I hope that you guys will, will see that. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Walston. Please state your name. My name is Brian Walston. And, uh, Could you? So sorry. Would you mind pulling the mic? Closer? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> my name is Brian Walston, and, and uh, I'd like to kind of <laughs> agree with what Jason Taylor said right there. And I'm an advocate for property rights, and I feel like by restricting a right, um, it devalues the property somewhat, even though it might in the future, but we don't know, it might increase in value. But I think the right to use was uh, sustained last week by the Supreme Court in the, you know, the federal court saying it's equal to uh, First Amendment and Second Amendment rights, as the property right is equal to that. And so I just encourage you, and I disagree with the, I heard many people say that the majority of the people is in favor of this. I think it's about 50-50. I, I, th I don't think the majority of the people is in, is in favor of this. All my circle of friends and my acquaint acquaintances Acquaintances, I don't have a single one that's in favor of restricting property rights. And so I think, like you said, it depends on who your friends are and who, who your acquaint acquaintances are. But we need controlled growth in the city. We do. And we need to modify, you know, maybe modify some of the ordina ordinances. But I, I disagree with taking the right away from the people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's not what we Captain yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holyoke. Oh, yeah, Captain Holyoke. You might try the green one. Okay, my name is Catherine Holyoke, and um, I have been here 50 years. I didn't inherit four generations back, but I am one of 7%, which is apparently verified. There's only 7% of us that own land. And while I accept the fact that those who do not own property have as much right to vote or to say what they feel as I do, I still have a really hard time with my property rights being taken away from me. I currently am not within the zone of the city, but I am surrounded by city out on the big field with Maverick. And I would like to be able to see my children be able to develop that land when the time comes, if they want to. I don't intend to sell it at this point in time. I like the green and the cows. But um, I just feel like that it is taking our rights away to some extent. Um, and I'm concerned. I mean, people that would want to buy, say, my big field, if they were to put a, com a home, homes or long term, uh, they would be in a commercial zone. They would also be in a taxing entity where they couldn't afford to live there. So I'm kind of limited with that property for gas stations or, you know, uh, restaurants or something like that, but it does limit my property rights. I have a hard time with that. And so even though I am really pulled, if you were to take half of the community, I think Brian Walson's right. I don't think that one group outweighs the other one. I live on the highway, and right now, every day it feels like Easter Safari because I can hardly get on to Highway 191. That's where I live, so I understand how bad it has gotten and I'm pulled because even though I agree with the fact that there are too many overnight accommodations, I still believe in private property rights and that we should be able to have those. 
I just hope that whenever this rule or in the thing is lifted that, you know, a new council or planning commission will, you know, be able to say, yes, you can now do this with your land, whatever you would like to do. Um, I guess that's kind of my say. I, I just feel like that those who own property should have the right to use that. Not in a I'm in your face kind of a thing, but, you know, to me, personal property rights should be just like that, the First Amendment rights. So thank you. Thank you. Jason Ramsdell. Thank you. I'm Jason Ramsdell. I live in the city. I own a house in the city, and I also own a lot in Grand thank County. You. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I had a few extra seconds. Um, thanks again for taking my comments. You know, there's a lot that has to do with the ordinance, and it's a lot of legalese and all that, and I want to just speak in general terms and kind of speak from my heart about this. And we're already starting to hear a lot about property rights. And I understand that concern about property rights. Um, but a lot of times what that comes down to is code for developers and developers trying to make money out of, out of Moab. And I understand that. It's a noble cause. Uh, I have entrepreneurial uh, aspects and interests myself, but it is not sustainable. It cannot be sustained the way we are going with unchecked growth. So that uh, is one of my main comments is that I understand property rights. I get that. But we cannot continue with uh, the unchecked growth. You know, what's missing from the conversation about property rights are the property rights of others that don't have commercial land. I own a house in, Mo uh, in Moab. I own a lot in the county. I have property rights, too. Everyone in this room has property rights, whether they own or rent, they're just as important. They have a lot to say, they have a lot to contribute in the town. And so property rights on our side is important. That's often not listened to. You know, and I, I wanna talk about some of those rights real quickly. You know, I have a right to a, a, a calm and peaceful city and neighborhood. I have a right to be, uh, to go into city market and not be stampeded every hour of every day. I have a right to live on a peaceful street without UTVs ripping up and down and keeping me up at all hours of the night. Those are my rights, even though I do not own commercial property or I'm not a developer. And lastly, I have a right to go into the wilderness and the solitude that we have around us and the public lands in Moab without being overrun by people. And all of those things I just mentioned are in threat if we do not control and contain the unchecked development and overnight, overnight use and accommodations here in Moab. So please limit and continue the moratorium. At least let's get through this 38% uh, increase and then see what the town looks like and then see how uh, we wanna take the town. And the last thing is moving the development to the north end of town is not acceptable either. You're just moving the development from the center of the town to the north side of town, which has been proposed. And is that the kind of billboard? Is that the kind of thing we want people coming to visit our beautiful town and our environment to see rows upon rows upon rows of overnight accommodations? I think not. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Westrom. My name is Chris Westrom. I own a home on Holyoke Lane, and I live here year-round. I'd like to see a moratorium on new hotels because there are already so many hotels either half-built or in the pipeline, and I don't know how Moab is going to supply a labor force, water, or other services to these large multi-story buildings. We're talking a lot of water use, a lot of bright lights all night long, and minimum wage jobs. I'd rather see more low-income housing and more high-income jobs that provide living wages for the people who live here. 
let's find other sources of revenue that stays here while providing better paying jobs for our residents. Thank you. Zach Bastian. Hi, my name is Zach Bastian. <clears throat> First of all, thank you all for doing what you do. It's a thankless job. I was born in Moab, and uh, I didn't inherit anything, but I do own the Silver Sage Inn Hotel. I purchased it about a year and a half ago, so you can imagine that I borrowed a lot of money to do it. Um, my concern is I bought a, a very old building, and I'm going to need to rebuild it someday. And when we changed uh, our rights as, uh, with property, and we proposed that we're going to do an overlay after the fact, that's really scary. Um, so what guarantees do I have whenever we're going to change the overlay? We're going to say, you can continue to do this, but when you need to rebuild, what does that look like? I guess I'm more, I have more questions than, than answers, and that's the only thing that concerns me, because I did grow up here, and I've seen a lot of changes that I don't like as our town has grown. I mean, I think most residents in Moab, if you own commercial real estate or not, or not like Ms. Holyoke said, there are challenges with all of the tourism that we had. I've also seen what happens when we didn't have tourism um, and how hard it was to make a living. Uh, and so it's a balancing act with having, you know, UTVs running by your house at night. I get it. It's frustrating. Um, and we have to figure out a way that's fair because we throw around the word developers and hotel owners, but we forget that there are humans behind that that work hard. You know, I, I work 90 hours a week for three years. My daughter had to watch me do it. And it's, it's a sacrifice to be a business owner and to buy real estate. And I get that everyone has a voice. And uh, we just have to be mindful of how we go about that kind of stuff because it does affect people. Um, it doesn't just affect developers. It's people that we're, defect, that we're affecting with this. Uh, anyways, I appreciate you for your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And to be clear, what is on the table now, you, will, you would be able to redevelop your property. It would be a legal use within that zone. Yeah. Amy Weiser. Hello, I'm Amy Weiser. I work with uh, er, which one? The green green okay, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I work with Business Resolutions, and I'm here representing my employers and the properties that they own. I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to this draft ordinance and accompanying map. We appreciate all of the hard work that you do and support the draft ordinance that secures existing overnight accommodations as a permitted use, so as not to create the complexities and hardships created by non-conforming uses. We would like to request two changes to the draft map. Um, I've got a map attached to the letter. Um, one is a property adjacent to um, the Archway Inn. The owners have been working with the city to secure um, a lift station, a maintenance road, a sewer easement for a very large sewer drain line that's going to serve a number of properties to the north end of town. So they just asked for consideration for that piece of property. They've been planning a uh, campground RV park there for a number of years. Uh, the other one is a property adjacent to the Raven's Rim zip line. Similar situation, they've been planning a campground RV park there, and they've recently given the city a number of easements, maintenance roads, those kinds of things, for a very large storm drain line that connects to uh, the UDOTS project. So they just wanted to ask for consideration for those two pieces of property. Um, alternatively, they request that when it's time for the future overnight accommodations overlay, that these two properties be considered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wayne. My name 
name's Wayne Hoskison, and uh, thank you for being on the planning commission. <laughs> we, miss, we miss you, Wayne. <laughs> but I, I did want to say that I, I, I do support dropping overnight accommodations from all of those zones as you've done it. Um, I am a little bit worried about the concept of the overlay zones and I think the draft maps that I saw don't really do what I would like to see done. Um, but I do have some, some, some more generalized sort of comments, and one is that I don't see anywhere in this ordinance about our general plan, which we just finished in 2017, that talks about preserving the small town character of Moab. And I think that's, that was also the comment that was the most received comment while we were developing that master plan. So I think we need to make sure that we're, we're keeping our eye on that as to develop this um, plan in the future. And, and the other thing, and I, I was just looking at a, sort of a comparison of Grand County and Washington County because we have very similar kinds of problems. And Grand County has um, about 10,000 people. Washington County has about 166,000 people. Um, they get, um, I better put my glasses on. Um, and they're getting about 4,317,000 visitors a year to Zion Park. And they were getting about 2 million 700,000 in 2007. Right now, in Arches, we're seeing about one and a half million people. And in 2007, we were seeing about 860,000 people. In other words, in both places, we sort of doubled that number of visitation. But when you look at Grand County, that's 164 visitors per resident. And when you look at Washington County, it's 26 visitors per resident. It's quite different. Now, even if you look at just those sort of gateway communities to Zion National Park and just the ones in, um, uh, in Washington County, it still comes out to about 24,000 people. And if you extend the, another 10 miles beyond that, you're still looking at probably about 100,000 people. So it's the impact of, of this kind of visitation is, you know, is dramatic when it's so few people being impacted. So I think not only do we need to be looking at how Wait. we treat our visitors. Better that, hustle. My time? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. And you can submit those comments to us if you'd like to. Okay, thank you. We will continue to take um, written comments, if you wish, via email or in writing or whatever, um, after this hearing. Michael Johnson. Hi, my name is Michael Johnson. Um, I have lived here for seven years, and I do have nightly rentals, so I'm sort of part of the issue, and I understand that. Um, I am not opposed to this ordinance, but I do have some questions. Uh, a couple of them have been answered by um, Nora already. But uh, one, I'm a little concerned about the existing uh, map. I know there's units for, I, I have a unit on Williams Way. Um, I know there's a number of units there that rent nightly, don't show up as existing. Um, and I'm a little concerned that, you know, what, what does that map mean if they're going to be able to just come and get a business license and start doing nightly rental? And I don't think that meets your ordinance. Also, I feel as a commercial property owner um, that this is reducing the value of our properties across the board. And I think the reason it, it, it is is that um, the properties are so expensive and running out of other uses because this is a lucrative and harder to, to combat or compete with people wanting to do hotels and other commercial uses. I would like the Planning Commission town council and the town to consider working with the county to look at lowering property assessments on commercial properties because we are looking at a loss. It seems fair if you're taking uses away, um, there should be a reflection of that. Um, 
you know, I think you all know, if you have owned commercial property, it went up substantially, and I think it went up substantially because of this growth. And if you take it away, I think um, it, it's only fair, and the community should support um, reducing that and paying it, paying for things in a different way. Thanks. Thank you. Russell Vicente. My name is Russell Vicente. Um, it is the job of the Planning Commission and City Council to do what is best for the 6,000 plus residents of Moab. There's an overwhelming majority, 90% uh, of the comments to Landmark uh, have said that there are enough hotels and enough overnight rentals and they do not want any more of the problem that comes with overnight rentals. Um, it's evident in face-to-face -face conversation, online community groups, in the newspaper, and in comments and petitions to city and county. Um, for 700 plus signatures, completely opposed to overnight rentals to be gathered in four days is unprecedented and the impl implications need to be understood by you. Thank you. There are two groups opposed, small condo owners and big hotel developers. Provisions are already carved out for existing uh, OA and other small owners. Big developers already have their money and they've had years to see that the day would come that people of Moab would say enough is enough. Real estate is speculative. I own property in Moab. Yes, I would like the value to go up. Uh, it is my retirement plan, but it doesn't matter if I put my money in real estate in the stock market, futures market, or I bet on the Super Bowl, it is all a speculative investment and I could win or lose. This brings me to my next point. By removing OAs, the commercial property is still very valuable for financial gain, but with items that our city can benefit from. Restaurants, retail spaces, gyms and workout studios. An Indian restaurant built today would have a line out the door. <laughs> there is so much money left to be made with this uh, ordinance that it's obvious who wants to make money with the community in mind and who puts greed above all else. You're hearing the same few voices in opposition over and over again. Your judgment is not to be decided on who is the loudest, who speaks the most often, or who threatens a lawsuit. The county and city have attorneys and other executive staff that are trained attorneys and they will help shape the regulations to avoid lawsuits that have any actual merit. Frivolous lawsuits and threats of such are the first tool a rich bully will go for. Let them spend their money while you worry about the future and the character of, uh, and well-being of our community. Um, another point, property rights, just like the right to free speech and the right to firearms, is not without reasonable limits. I can't go yelling certain words in this public space and there's many other things that are limited even in our constitutional rights. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Travis Nauman. Is that right? Yeah, because okay. it's Nauman. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so hi, my name is Travis Nauman. Um, I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to chat with you guys. Um, I I'm going to kind of speak to you in plain terms as well. I generally am supportive of the direction of the ordinance. I think my concerns are more on thinking about long-term planning, particularly water and planning for water and planning for expansion. I think there's still some uncertainty about if there's room even for the growth that we kind of currently have in the, in the dockets. And, those current, and there's some uncertainty with the current studies that are going on too. And I don't think that really the time has been taken to digest this new information. And also think about the fact that as we move forward this century, there's a higher probability that our water supply will be shrinking because the vast majority of science is pointing towards climate change impacting our, uh, this region in a pretty negative way in that respect. So I think uh, when we're thinking about, about property rights, which I think it's super important to consider everybody's um, interests and, and, and make sure that everybody is treated fairly, especially with you know, existing rights, I think we also have to, to realize that, that property rights are contingent on infrastructure and the carrying capacity of a place to support what is actually happening. And I don't think we have that information yet. And I think my concern about kind of the language that about opening up through careful planning and this overlay that, that's, that's coming in, I'm not 
haven't digested all the legalese of it, is that I think the stringent, there needs to be incredibly stringent um, standards for, um, for new applications for housing that actually have to fit into a long-term long plan that accounts for not only the water infrastructure, but the infrastructure in general. And there's been a lot of comments about traffic, about what our infrastructure can, can handle as far as the influx of tourism and this kind of explosion of tourism. And I don't think we've addressed that issue either. I think that really needs to be addressed before we expand this already exploding market. And just a couple other points. Um, housing, I have a lot of friends that have problems getting housing. I've had problems hiring people because of housing multiple times. And these aren't for minimum wage jobs or jobs that are considerably higher paid than that. Um, and, uh, and just overall quality of life. I don't, I don't like the direction that things are going. I like living in a small town. So thanks, I appreciate your attention. Thank you. Thanks, Travis. Thank you. Kelly Quinn. Thank you all for being here. My name's Kelly Quinn. I don't live in the city limits proper, but I'm surrounded by it. I live in the Hecla neighborhood, so it's pretty much the city. Um, I'm gonna piggyback on a lot of what people have said already. Um, I'm, I was, I'm supportive of the moratorium. I, it's only six months, and I think that we, it was, we just started opening the can of worms and asking the right questions of the direction of our community and really understanding the impacts on the tourism. Um, I think that those questions need to be answered before we allow more overnight rentals and I'm supportive of the city's um, new ordinance. Um, I mean, we haven't even had a year to really understand the impacts. It was only six months. Um, and the number of nightly rentals or, or, or accommodations in the pipeline already is alarming, and we need to really figure out the impact on those before we can move forward. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> Krell Stakelmeyer, I'm struggling with that one. Help me out there. Krell. Krell, thank you. Um, I am Krell Stegelmeyer. I live in Fruta, Colorado. So um, about five years ago, um, I bought a piece of property on 400 North, 656 West, 400 North. It's surrounded by the Entrada um, development. It's all overnight rentals. Um, I bought that place because my boys and I come down here about every other weekend to mountain bike. And we wanted a place to stay and we can't afford the cost of renting an overnight rental because they're expensive. And I can't afford to buy a place and then leave it empty. So I bought that property to build a couple of units on that we could stay in and then rent when we're not there. Um, it's surrounded by overnight rentals, it's currently not a good location for any other commercial use. So by taking that right from me, I now have a piece of property that I'm paying um, property tax on at a higher rate because of the value of it as an overnight rental property. Um, and I can't really use it. And so I would just ask that as you're looking to limit this, to look at those small pieces of property like that, um, you know, and the size of impact of, of what I would do, I'm not a developer versus, you know, a hotel is, is nowhere near the same. And so to consider small places like that, that would, would, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Moran. Uh, 
I'm Mary Moran, and I'm going to be short and sweet. First, I want to thank all of you for being on the Planning Commission and all the city councilors and everyone who's been working on this, because it is complex and difficult and thankless. Um, and I like the general direction that you're going um, with the draft. I'm concerned about um, the potential overlays. I basically would like to stop all new overnight rentals, but you know I know that's not entirely possible, perhaps. But um, with a 38% increase in the number of overnight rental rooms in the next few years, I think any, you know, we should wait a while, like 38%, that should have happened over 20 years, not over two or three years. So that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Carolyn Daly. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to address the commission. Um, my name is Carolyn Daly. Um, I don't have a lot of details. I just have some heartfelt comments. Uh, I first came to live in Moab in uh, November of 1987. Uh, when I came, I had been living in Durango, and I wanted to move somewhere where I just didn't know anybody, so I came here. And I went into the, um, the co-op uh, food store and I asked, where can I stay the night? And they said, oh, just go up to Sand Flats. You can throw down your sleeping bag, which I did. I went up there. The whole place was empty and I had to myself. This was 32 years ago. I'm, I'm dating myself now. Um, in 1990, I left for six months. I um, lived in Guatemala for six months. I came back. I couldn't find anything in Moab because while I was gone in those six months, the, they paved the Slick Rock mountain bike parking lot. And they put in 865 new beds of hotels. So you'd go down Main Street. And you couldn't find anything because all your landmarks were kind of hidden and, and screwed up. So that was back then. That was a huge change that happened in 1990. Um, I actually left and moved and lived in Guatemala, and um, I returned in 2010, and now I'm a permanent resident here in Moab. And I just can't believe uh, the changes. Uh, I don't know what the poor people do that were born and raised here, but the changes, we came here envisioning a Moab that was like it was in 1990 when I lived here before. Um, and that was 10 years ago now, even year by year, we've seen the onslaught of the tourism and the changes that causes and how it affects the quality of life for residents here. As planners, you need to plan for the quality of life of your citizens. And, and you know, it's too much of a good thing, all the advertising that's been done. I was flying back from Guatemala did I turn my thing? Anyway, I was flying back from Guatemala, and on the plane of United Airlines, there were two short clips. One was Hawaii. The other was mountain biking in Moab on a plane from Guatemala, which is a third world country. Um, and I was like shocked. You know, it's like, this is too much. And I, I really feel the crisis of the... Uh, lack of affordable housing here. I've been learning more about that. That is a real crisis and it's driven because the property values are jacked up because you can get more for an overnight uh, nightly rental. And people cannot live here. People are living in their cars behind city market. It, it's just shocking. And uh, I just want to say, do we want this in the next 30 years? I mean, this has been 30 years. What's going to happen in the next three years? Thank you. Thank you. Laura? Dear Sari? Okay. Dennis Silva? My name's Dennis Silva. I live on Highland Drive in the county. Uh, we have a rental property on Loveridge Drive. 
It's a long-term rental. And I think all the points that have been made about the things that we should be concerned with before we move forward with many additional overnight rentals are extremely valid. Water, infrastructure, I mean, I can't name them all. Um, I moved here for the countryside. I didn't move here for the city. I didn't move here for the hotels or the restaurants or the convention centers. Um, and I still have plenty of country to go see and thrive in. It, it is what makes me thrive here. Um, but I think if we can just take the time and you can recommend to the city council to accept this ordinance and pass it and give them the privilege to help our city develop the way that those elected officials who I, you know, I didn't vote for anybody in the city, but they represent 6,000 people and they can make the decisions for us and how we develop. And when the city council changes and it gets a different group of politicians, that group can make some decisions. And the people who want to develop land, there's still a chance for them to develop land. I mean, all these ordinances can be changed again. Right now we have a plan that is trying to keep towns small, like Wayne Hoskinson said, you know, you have a vision that you try and achieve. But uh, I guess that's all. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Solana, Jade Cisco. I'm in favor of this so, ordinance. Solana, would you mind the yellow, turn over the yellow timer? Oh, yes. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. What the community needs is a tourism industry that is of both high quality enjoyment for the tourists and also preserves the nature around us. In order to provide a high quality experience to the tourists, we need adequate housing for residents slash employees to live in. With runaway overnight rentals development happening without the rest of the economy catching up, we could see our booming economy suffer a bust. When someone buys property, they should be aware that it is a financial risk. They should be aware that zoning laws and other ordinances are subject to change, influencing what they can do with their property. I believe that we're all connected and that we should look beyond the individual to the community, to the ecosystem, and the multi-generational big picture of our species. I think that when we own a material possession or a piece of land, we should think of ourselves as renting it. It just as much belongs, just as much as it belongs to an individual, it belongs to the earth and our species and we should act accordingly. Our individual lives are so fleeting. I'm in favor of five and then four. Once we have some good legislation drafted, we should allow some new overnight accommodation, but only of the highest quality, living building challenge or equivalent. Thank you. Jeff Peck. My name is Jeff Peck, and I represent a, a, a builder that has been building stuff down here in Moab for a number of years, helping people. Um, I don't know if, I, I haven't heard anybody talk about this, but one of the things that has happened, um, well, let me mention a couple of things. First, you guys passed an ordinance a while back that said if you're going to do nightly rentals, then you have to have pay a fine or you have to build low-income housing to, to offset that. Remember that? Okay. <clears throat> Subsequent to that, we bought a sizable amount of property thinking that we were going to build these nightly rentals and build some apartment complexes to offset it that would more than offset what your ordinance said. Now, this, is, this comes under a federal uh, law. I don't know if you're even aware of it. Have you ever heard of Opportunity Zone? Better look it up. Federal government passed a law about opportunity zones. Outside of the city limits, you have a number of opportunity zones that have been designated by the federal government and the state of Utah by the governor. 
Now, we invested into that property with the right to build nightly rentals the way it was zoned. That law requires us to spend that money and build within 30 months. To spend that much money in 30 months, we can't have a delay. It's not going to work. It'd be like if you were enticed to go to a bank and put your money in the bank, and by the way, once you put that money in, you have to pay a 6% penalty if you don't invest and build. And you're going to tell me you're going to take our property rights away? As a courtesy, you let us know that. As a courtesy, your letter said, we're going to let you know that we're going to take away your rights. Think about that. I think each one of you got to think about not just all these people's rights, but everybody's got rights. Okay? And if you're going to set property zoning to be a certain way and entice people like the lady who said, hey, I saw this advertisement, they're down in Guatemala to come to Moab, and you guys did that. You advertised to get people here. No, we didn't. Then people built to accommodate that. And now you've made an ordinance previously to help offset this low-income housing need that you have. And we were willing to do, and still are willing to build, some apartment complexes to help that housing. Okay? But now you're going to say, now that we've put this money in, we can't take it out. By federal law, we cannot take that money out. And if we don't invest it, we have a 6% penalty for every month the money is not invested. That's a lot of money when you talk about the investment we've got in here. I think you need to consider it. Everybody wants to consider their rights. I want you to consider our rights as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Last call for Laura. She said she didn't want to speak. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can't read. Uh, is there anybody else out there who have not turned in a form that would like to speak to us tonight? Thank you all for using my timers tonight. That was lovely. Uh, I would like to close the public hearing at 7.13 p.m. Uh, the next item on our agenda is... Um, just basically a discussion. Nora, do you have anything extra for us? No, not at this time. Okay. Thanks for coming, everyone. I really appreciate it. Thank you, it. everybody. Yeah, awesome turnout. It's great. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Planning Commission members, there is not an action item for us to approve or uh, send this to Council. And since it was not on the agenda, we cannot do anything about it this week. So, we... Yeah, let me... She was just saying that because there isn't an action item on the agenda, we can't do anything about it this week. So, we, ha we can't send it to Council yet. Does the number five say action item? I'm yeah, confused. but there's nothing under it. There's nothing oh. listed. <laughs> so Can let me pass like, around the comments to us. Sure. Yeah. The, the read only comments? Sure. So let me be clear on that. Uh, there is an action item number five on the agenda, but there is nothing under that action item. So we cannot take any action to send or not send this to council. So what we're hoping to do is have any other further discussion that we need tonight and next meeting and i hope that next meeting can be next week if we can manage it you realize that july 4th is thursday so we can't have it thursday what do we have on thursday fourth of july yeah yeah mm -hmm. so that won't work uh, no. what we would like to do if if everybody is available and we can manage it we would like to schedule a meeting next week so that we can either uh send this with a positive recommendation recommendation or a negative recommendation or any amendments to city council and so that they can move forward with this because our next planning commission meeting is not until the 11th. 11th. Mm. Right. And so we would like to move forward with this as soon as we can. And so I'll leave that up to Nora to decide on a proposed meeting date and see if we can all get together to get that done. I'm gone all next week. I'm gone on the 10th of July. Yeah. So how about the third? Wednesday? 
Wednesday the 3rd. Can we get it done that quick? She'll be gone. I'll be on. She'll be gone. That's okay. We still have a quorum. So that's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And you, so you, you won't be here. Everybody right? else, everybody, Kaya? yeah. Yeah, I'll be here. Okay, July 3rd and time, six, seven, what's your preference? Six, five, six, six, five. six, and it'll be a short six. meeting. So, yeah, Wednesday. I, Wednesday the 3rd. I'll try to set that up. And then if you folks want to discuss it all and then provide me with any additional direction based upon the couple public comments, that would be great. Okay. So uh, you guys know what we have in front of us. We have the idea of putting in a definition for overnight accommodations, for removing overnight accommodations from those zones, and for including some language about existing overnight accommodations and where they exist in the map that belongs with them. Mm -hmm. So is there any discussion that we'd like to have tonight, or should we continue that until next week? Um, I'd like to have access to all the addresses that have potential rental properties and condos before then. Is that Potential? possible? The, like the list you have of current overnight rentals and business licenses. Okay. And I can come pick that up at your office. Okay. How, in whichever format you prefer. I have an Excel sheet with okay. all the addresses. Okay. Is that? It's perfect. Can you forward that to the rest of us? You might as well send it all out to us. Absolutely. Can we talk about the last comment, the opportunity fund mm -hmm. area? That's a tax credit. It's a federal tax credit. So it seems like what that individual was saying was that they had opted into the program and that the, to continue to receive that tax credit, they need to right. follow. I just want to make sure that that's clear to everyone. It's not a federal law requiring a specific use of that property. It's a federal law requiring that they reinvest that tax credit into an allowed or incentivized use. And I think his, the property he's talking about is in the county. That was my. Okay. So, because we don't, I don't believe don't, we have opportunities. We don't have opportunities zones. Zones no. here, yeah. Yeah. And the, the surrounded by Entrada property, I assume that's the one on the corner of Hale and 400 North? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. It's a small piece of property. Yeah, with trees on it right now and a whole bunch of cheatgrass. It's across <laughs> from my house. <laughs> hey! <laughs> um, okay. I just wanted to make sure I knew which property they were talking about. So it's right next to its residential area on all sides except where the Entrada is. You sure? That's commercial across the street, isn't it? Uh, across the street um, is the old hospital. It's R4? Yes. That is a good example of someone, he's pretty heavily affected because he's got, yeah, he doesn't really have any about. other commercial opportunity there. And he's, you know, kind of shadowed by those big yeah. Entrada units. He probably pray, paid a premium for that lot and, you know. But we do. This he has a legitimate concern. Yeah. But we do have to remember that we are going to implement these overlays. It, it's not as if we're changing code and then shutting the book and walking away from yeah. the table. So maybe we just think about him when we're looking at those. And, yeah. and I think we also need to talk about uh, the idea of the man with the hotel. If he decides to rebuild his hotel, uh, I'm sure that he wants his number of units protected and things like that. And those mm -hmm. are the things that I think this is the reason that we want to implement this code change now is so that we have the time to take advantage of so that we don't feel pressured to do the wrong thing. So uh, for me, and I know that we can come up with this again next week, but for me, the idea of disallowing or taking them out of the city code now gives us the space and the time to really consider all of these other options that people are coming to us with and to be able to do the right thing both for the community and for our business people out there. So, I, I think Amy brought up a good point with her paper she gave us here about the property that's already investing in that northbound sewer line that's going mm -hmm. north of town and all the other infrastructure that they're doing for these accommodations that she's got a letter here for. Right. It's and already in place. They're already putting the money into it. And I think that litigation is going to be really heavy. But, but as a reminder, we are going to put these overlays in. 
There's no guarantee on overlays. If you read this, it says that there is no plan on the overlay. And there's no I'm guarantee on zoning period ever in any city, period. There's no, there's no guarantee on the overlay. But our purpose here is to use this time when we don't have overnight accommodations to make a plan for the city. And as Wayne said, make a plan for the city that brings in our general plan and so that we can, we can build properly. I, I, think, I, don't I, think, think, I think what exactly what you say and, and discussing this with other people, I think we kind of forget that our general plan in the last in the last year or two years since 19 uh, since 2017, I think we have totally forgotten the yeah. general plan. And thank you for I that. Mean, Nora way. did and it is thank in Nora's you, materials Wayne. that she submitted to us. Oh, I, 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 <laughs> I, think, I think that we have forgotten the general plan. And I think that, that this basically puts, puts people uh, or, or quality of life or whatever the general plan says, should, it says on the, every, every thing that comes before us has that, um, has that thing of you know, what the city wants to be and, or, or any ordinance or anything that we actually have before us every day, every time we do something has that that line that says to make it a better place to live and i think that we have totally forgotten that and i think that's why we have to back up and go wait a minute and so i know that this process that we're going to go through hopefully finished by the end of the year will be contentious and we're going to have some some tough decisions to make uh but please remind keep reminding yourself that that we are going to put something in place and we are going to take it to city council and then at that point they as elected officials will help make that decision and so uh it's going to be a tough six months for us i think to develop those and to agree on them but once we do then um we'll see what our elected officials want to do with them exactly I mean, it kind of seems like the consensus was wait until the 38% more overnight accommodation units are built, take an inventory while we try to catch up with housing in the meantime, yeah. in the next two to three years. But, but in the we meantime, do have something written yeah. and ready and to meantime, recommend. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's ready. council's decision. And uh, you know, 38%, that could take two or three years. And I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that that's our goal, if we get these overlays completed by end of year, then that's council's decision. Yes. And we do have to remember that, that we are not here to make decisions. We are here to help plan and send things to council because we don't get paid to make decisions. <laughs> no, but we shouldn't be influenced by any, any outside source. <clears throat> we have a responsibility to ourselves to do the right thing. Not, not trying to be influenced by hurry or this is what we want. We need to do what's right. And that's why this next six months is going to be tough because what you think is right and what I think is right can really be very different and we've got to figure out to come together as a Correct. council to come up with Correct. things. <clears throat> and what likely will come out is maybe an overlay zone, maybe some other mechanism, but um, then it would have to be applied to areas mm -hmm. um, and again you and the city council the city council gets to decide based on your recommendation of you know how they want to meter that how they want to allow certain areas to move forward when I mean I, I don't think I doubt if the plan would be to reopen all of the areas to new overnight accommodations all at once I suspect it will be as we develop criteria and as we move forward and I hope that the Planning Commission uh, might, if the time crunch happens, be willing to um, hold some maybe Saturday half-day workshops to get this pushed through. Um, and I think the end of the year is a, is a nice goal to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything else? I think we need to go on a group bike ride and take a look at the city. I'm being dead serious. We need to get out of this room and go walk around and open our eyes and see some things. I think that's a good idea. Come down. It's amazing how much, it's amazing how many cubby holes are in this town. It's amazing. There are places I've never seen before. <laughs> that, you, I mean, I'm, seriously, I mean, I've lived here 20 years and there's a lot of little 
places that, that I've never seen. <laughs> hey, I just you, got what? a mental picture of you walking around going, whoa. How many of you? <laughs> I do. It's like, wow, I didn't even know that was there. Go up, go up on the Sandflats Road and have a look down on our town. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And you will, you'll be amazed as to how much open property there is. Okay? And go up there at 4 o'clock in the morning and look to see how much extra light we have down there. <laughs> well, we're, we've addressed the lights, but, but there's a lot of open space. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And now, because we are taking some proactive action, we have an opportunity to take what's left of the remaining open space and actually plan like a planning department and a planning commission should, where we just haven't in the last 20 years. It's been pretty unfettered so well did in you know I've been on planning commission for 18 years oh and I have and so the she's the last about, man standing I'm the last one <laughs> I'm the last one and Joe you you know I've been on it and Amy knows I've been on it um, and I'm one of those last people in town that has open space in town and um, I'm kind of there with Mrs. Holyoke and everybody else. And I love the open space. I totally love it. I totally love it. But I also understand that change is going to happen. And that's where we as planning commissioners have to make sure that change is done correctly mm -hmm. and done. I mean, my kids will probably develop it. I don't know. Um, that's their decision. But I love that open space. I don't want to see every open space, piece of open space in this town to be developed. I just don't. I think um, the, piece, the pieces around me, um, there are several pieces of property around me that are for sale um, for several million dollars. And um, they're gonna be developed at some point. And I'll be sad, but they have to remember that change does happen and, and it's sometimes it's not very much fun, but it's gonna happen. And we just hope that we can direct that change in a way that's good for the community. Right, exactly. Anything else? Do we want to, are we, the comments um, that were not read, do you have those? I'd like mm -hmm. to look at those if possible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you can, I mean, I presume you could probably read them out loud if, uh, or not. Would you like me to enter in, in well, the record? I, you know what I could do? I'll have them transcribed and um, okay. send them out to you. Okay. Tomorrow, okay. No, 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 not tomorrow, Monday. They're, they're relatively short, so, and there's not many of them. Hmm. Yeah, I'll just pass them as I go. I'm just keeping a personal tally and I wanted to see them as well. So for next Wednesday's meeting, um, <clears throat> please take a look at the things that Nora has sent us and the map included. I know the map's gonna be a little bit of a work in progress, uh, but it is part of our ordinance that we're hoping to send on to council. So um, take a good look at that map. And I know Becky, you'll have some insight in there that certainly I don't have um, with things like that. And, and uh, take a look at the language for the definition of overnight accommodations and established overnight accommodations. And if you have any changes there, please bring them next week. Um, is there anything else we should be looking at for next week, Nora? I don't think so. I will try to get something out to you before Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> My brother happens to be in town and so I'm taking tomorrow off, but okay. I'll try to get something on Monday. Okay. So just to be clear, item six, section six, uh -huh. if that's, with, that's within this ordinance, if we vote on it, it's required for us to work on that, correct? Or is that not within technically? Um, I mean, it's a, it's a resolution it's that we're passing. I just wanted so to make yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. And we are going to do that. Okay. I think that's good. Give us some. Yeah. <laughs> well, in thinking about like people like Zach with his hotel, you know, I think we should keep in mind that, you know, with whatever restrictions we're going to put on future building, that we not get too crazy to where it makes it impossible right. for people to rebuild with building requirements and right. things yeah. like that. So. Yeah, but when you pass it, you've passed it. <clears throat> the overlay is not going to happen necessarily. 
So if you pass the ordinance, you have to know that we're taking away the rights of the people to do that in those zonings. Right. The overlay, it even says, in, I think in six, that there's, or seven, that there's no guarantee it's going to happen. There's nothing on the table that says it's going to happen. It just could happen. But once you take the rights away, as soon as they're gone, they're gone. Well, they could come back at any time. Back they could. You used the word could. I mean, the, I, I just I don't see a difference one way or the other. I think it's it, just as easy it is to do one. It's that easy to do the other. If you look so. at history, when you take rights away, it's very difficult to get them back. Yeah. Correct. Okay. But real estate is speculative. No matter what, and it's very true, real estate is speculative. If there's another crash that happens, like 2008, then let, everybody's going to lose. Then let supply and demand handle itself. Right. It always has. Why not? Well, what do we have government for? Well, the government is to con isn't to control people's rights. It's to enforce them, not take them away. Well, what are the rights? The rights are within our zoning. We put that years ago. Well, years well, ago, we did the zoning. Well, Go read the pamphlets upstairs. We're sitting here right now if it's already done. The, have to change. The, the zoning is what they are. People have invested in that. That's like saying that we don't need any more elementary schools, therefore we can't have any more kids because we're not going to build no more, school, no more schools. You can't legislate that. Let the supply and demand handle itself. I'm sorry, but that's the best way to let it handle. Yes. And on the other side of that, I would, I would bet my house, which is fully mortgaged, uh, that we are going to implement these overlays at some point very soon. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Just like we could get an entirely new city council come November and they could totally, totally change, change everything. It I mean, could, it's, it goes either way and it really is, you know, we make the recommendations. We're supposed to be the, the, the specific experts in planning that, that give our opinion and think about this and try to do the right thing for the community to council. So, and that's what we need to keep doing. And it have, seems like we're on track. I, I have to say, as a, historically, um, I'm 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 going to announce right now after January or December 31st, I'm off council. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done. Um, this has been extremely difficult. This is probably one of the hard, hardest jobs that I've ever had to do. Sure was a heck of a lot easier just doing definitions and um, doing zoning and and rezones and stuff like that. Um, so you guys have a really hard job ahead of you. You're um, going to be here through December. I'll be here through <laughs> December and then I'm out of here. Um, but I have to say that, um, you know, the, 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 when I've thought about writing a, a note to the paper is that change happens no matter what happens. And I know there's people here that have been here their entire lives and they don't want things to change but change happens no matter what. And I just, emotionally, I just can't see my neighbors just be totally torn apart by this. And that's the reason why I'm getting off of it. I can do garage setbacks till the day I'm, you know, till the day I die. I can do zone changes. I can do all this kind of stuff. But this stuff is just, it's just, it just rips me apart. This stuff just it affects makes me people's crazy. lives. Sure, it, 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 yep. it totally affects. It could be very negative. And it can be, you know, I had a pay, I had somebody write me a letter, and I and I don't have a really thick spine, and I and I don't. But he said I didn't know what I was talking about. He just wrote me a letter, and he says you're totally stupid, and you don't know what you're talking about. And I was just like, okay, I'm done. In fact, my husband said, you're you you're done. And I said, no, I will I will finish this out. But I, I just can't. So you guys are we're going to just have to have a backbone and, and just know that change is going to happen. Yeah, I mean, and I will say, if we're just sort of talking generally, I have never in my time being in Moab seen something that seems to have united a very diverse swath of the community as much as the overwhelming comments to Landmark that they would prefer option four or five. That came from all corners of the political spectrum, every socioeconomic class, people who've lived here for 40 years and people I, who've lived I here. I don't, I don't agree. I'm, it's not an agree or disagree I know, thing, I know, it's but, numbers. But I don't, feel like, I don't feel like that we have a cross-section 
of that. I mean, then they should I, have I, given I, comments it's, it's, for it's, six it's, months. It's, that's it's, what everybody it's does. It's like the meeting I went to. I know. To, like, I understand, quiet. but they that's what we have to go on. We have actual numbers, or we have this idea that we have more of a balanced perspective, which is fine. But if we have something we have to rely on, it's it's the facts that we have in front of us. It's the statistics, and the, and it really has. And I have seen. You know, everyone doesn't agree on the methods, but there really is that idea that like, wow, we're feeling overwhelmed and choked and enough is enough and we do need to do something. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I will say like, I, I've not seen one thing that I've seen, you know, two particular people on Facebook ever agree about and they agree about this thing, for example. So, um, yeah. And again, a reminder that we are not here to make those decisions. We are here to offer up suggestions for city council. Right, that's correct. So, okay, anything else? Um, and again, we can certainly continue this at six o'clock on Wednesday, July 3rd, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the public hearing is done and I appreciate everybody who is here for that. And I am glad I brought my timers so I didn't have to fight people. Good idea. Yeah, Good idea. That was awesome. Having, having two is brilliant. <laughs> having two of my I, I didn't think it's, I know, me too. I was like, why do you have two? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that was smart. That was, yep. That's why I teach I've a done teacher. this before. <laughs> yes, she has. She has. <laughs> okay. Uh, any future agenda items, Nora, besides what we've already <laughs> talked about? <laughs> Um, no, as I mentioned before, um, we're going to have some plats come before you. Um, eventually, Abbey subdivision will be coming before you. We're still working on some secondary access issues, um, but you can expect that probably within the next month. And um, we've already see, received, and you have letters in opposition to that. So it'll, that'll be an interesting process. Where is that located? Powerhouse Lane. Yeah, Powerhouse oh. Lane. Yeah. And it's big. Uh, it's huge. I knew it was going to happen. 200 homes or something like that? Something, something like that. Like that. Yeah. It's big. Yeah. yeah. So it's currently rural. It's, what is the zoning currently? You know, I'm not. That is C. I'm not sure off the top of the, my head. R2. It's R2. I think it's R2. It, yeah. It's Nora? a single family subdivision. Oh, okay. Is there going to be just one entry to that? Do you know? Or is there more than one? We're That's hoping what they're that fighting there are about. two. Yeah. That's where we're trying to get. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's what needs to happen, but again, that's... Is it a housing authority development? No. no. Mm -mm. It's across from the one, but... Mm -hmm. It's just big. Market rate. Yeah. 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 That's been... Yeah. It's going to change. So, Nora, we have a July 3rd meeting. Do we also have the July 11th meeting? Yes. Okay. And I Although, will... at this point, I don't have any agenda items. Uh... So we'll see how the July 3rd meeting goes, and there's a potential we could cancel the July 11th. Okay. Okay. And I have, uh, I will be gone the July 25th meeting, just as note. I might be gone. I have to look. We'll see. Okay. If there's not anything else that needs to be discussed for the good of the commission, then I pronounce the meeting closed at 7.38 p.m. Thank you guys for being here and listening. Another amazing